That means the approximate background radiation of my room is equal to 0.14 millirems. Tanner, tech, tanner, tech, tanner, tanner, tech, tanner, tech, tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. I recently made a video where I compared two different types of counter mechanisms. One using a CD4026 chip to advance a seven segment display uh, across the different numbers, and one of them using an electromechanical counter that advances the number wheels every time an electric pulse is applied to it. I thought it would be cool to take a Geiger counter circuit that I worked on a while back and hook it up to both of these different types of counters to see what it looks like and see if it counts the radiation. Let's get started. So this is my old Geiger counter circuit. I made it quite a while ago. It has a speaker, a Geiger tube, and something around four transistors or five transistors inside it to form an amplifier that amplifies the small poles of the Geiger tube. I'll put a link in the description to the video where I built this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to connect this up to my high voltage power supply. And this high voltage power supply uses basically just a capacitor bank that charges up to around 400 volts, which should be more than adequate to run this power supply. And we only have to turn it on for just a little bit, and it should give the Geiger counter enough time to run for quite a while. So let's finish hooking this up, and we'll get it running. I'm setting my microphone right on top of the speaker so you can hear any clicks that come from this device. So let me charge up the power supply, and hopefully we should be able to hear some clicks once it reaches the adequate voltage. I'm not hearing anything yet. Let me put some americium near. As you can hear, it's working quite well. You can uh, see when I put the americium near the Geiger counter. Well, this is funny. I have the Geiger counter circuit down here. It fell off my table when I moved the tripod. And it still works. How interesting. As you can see, you can see the little pulses of the Geiger counter on my oscilloscope. I just took away the americium and you can still see it has a little pulse every once in a while. But anyway, these pulses are approximately 0.7 volts in length. I'm going to have to extend out one of those pulses to trigger a transistor so I can trigger my little counter. I'm hoping a pulse this short will be sufficient to trigger the counter. I know it'll be sufficient to trigger the electric counter using the CD4026, but I'm not sure if it'll be sufficient to trigger the other counter. As you can see, my numbers are counting up efficiently. I have a circuit here. We have a feed coming out of here. This feed is coming out of one of the positive pulses. This feed is not enough to actually trigger this uh, counter mechanism. So I have it going into a single transistor amplifier that boosts the voltage uh, just enough to power this device. Now let's take a look at it and see what it's doing exactly and how much count, how many counts we get. This whole setup looks pretty cool. I've got my capacitor bank running the Geiger counter at 450 volts, the Geiger counter circuit board right here. I'm not using this yet, but I have my amplifier and then some three of the breadboards powering the CD4029 counter chip. All right, let's just watch it count. Sounds pretty cool. So now it's gonna start counting from right now. As you can see, every time it clicks, you can get another count. That's pretty cool to me. All right, now I kind of want to figure out how much radiation is actually being produced by my device. And so I found the uh, data sheet for this device, and it says that for a certain radioactive material, the sensitivity in counts per second per millirem per hour is 29, and for another one it's 22. So that averages out to about 24.5 or 25. So basically there's 25 counts per second for every millirad per hour millirem per hour. Now I'm pretty sure this means 25 counts per second is equal to uh, 1 
milliram per hour, I think. So now if we do some calculations, and I'm still trying to understand this, if we have 25 uh, counts per second, then that we want to translate that to minutes, so we just multiply that by 60, and so we have 150 counts per minute equals 1 milliram per hour. So I think we should run this thing for a minute and see how that works. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a timer running and let it do its thing and we'll see what happens. So right now we've got one count and that's all so far. 17 counts in 52 seconds. All right, there's about 22 counts. So we have 22 counts per minute. So let's see. All right, so here's how we're gonna do this. We have 150 um, CPM is equal to one millirem per hour. And then what we can do is you can set that equal to 22 CPM equals to X millirads per hour. That means the approximate background radiation of my room is equal to 0.14 millirems. So this is 0.14 millirems per hour. So let's see if we can calculate how many millirems I'm going to have per year. So let's see, that's 0 0.14 times 24 times 360. 1,267 millirems per year. I wonder what the safety limit is. All right, so this is pretty funny. So it says, on average in the US, the US resident receives an annual radiation exposure from natural sources of approximately 310 millirem uh, per year, and then another 310 millirem uh, from man-made radiation sources. So that's 610 millirem per year. And my room currently is getting an average of 1,267 millirem per year, which is twice the average uh, of radiation exposure for the background of the United States, which means my room has a lot more radiation than most places. That could partially be because I have a lot of radioactive material sitting over there that I use to test the Geiger counter, but still, that's pretty funny. All right, let's recalculate this number if I put some americium right next to the Geiger tube. As you can hear, the sound spikes up significantly. All right, we're gonna start calculating that average. We're gonna, oh, wait, wait, wait. We're gonna disconnect the reset button as soon as I press the play button. Whew, that's getting a lot. We're only at seven seconds. Holy guacamole. This is getting a lot of counts. 57, 58, 59, 60. 555. That was like 555 uh, counts. Approximately, let me look at the footage. All right, so we calculated before. We had 22 counts per minute, and that was about two times the national average of radiation exposure for people. When I put the MRE seam next to the Geiger tube, we got 554 counts per minute. So let's cal calculate the uh, millirems per hour for that. So we can go in here, and we can do <laughs> 554 divided by 150. So that's 3.69 millirems per hour. If we multiply that by 24 and 360, we'll get our yearly exposure. If I was right next to that americium source. Holy crap, 31,000 millirems per year. I wonder what that is. All right, this is pretty funny. According to this article on a government website, it says that the exposure to adults working with radioactive materials must be below 5,000 millirem per year. Look at this. If I sat next to that americium source, according to my calculations, 
that would be 31,000 millirem per year, which is six times the legal limit for people working with radioactive materials. But of course, I'm not going to be sitting next to that thing for ever. Well, that's pretty cool. Well, I think that was pretty cool. We used the Geiger counter as well as this CD4026 counter to calculate the approximate amount of radiation uh, in my room for background and the approximate amount of radiation when I had a uh, little piece of americium right next to it. Which was pretty cool to just see those numbers. See that my room has two times the national average of background radiation and I don't know, it's cool. Now I think it's time to connect up this electromechanical counter to my Geiger counter machine just because that's more steampunk like. It's gonna be uh, electromechanical counter hooked up to a Geiger counter which will be pretty cool. Alright, so the diode across it fixed the issue of it self-triggering. I realized that the only reason it was self-triggering was because of the inductive spike brought by the coil inside here flowing through the entire circuit and causing an inductive spike big enough to trigger this uh, Geiger counter circuit over here. But still, I'm not getting enough uh, pulse width on this device to trigger it to turn on the, the clicker. So in order to make it work with the electromechanical clicker, I'll need to build a more complex circuit that'll extend the that small microsecond pulse into a longer pulse they'll be able to trigger this thing and make it turn on. I need a pulse of like 200 milliseconds and right now the pulse is like 0.1 milliseconds. Alright so I hope you liked that video. It was pretty interesting for me at least to see the background radiation in my room specifically and to use that counter to actually verify it and calculate that amount of radiation. And just to see how much radiation there is when that americium sample was placed near the Geiger tube. I thought that was pretty cool. Well, anyway, I wasn't able to get the electromechanical counter working, and I just need to figure out a way of elongating the pulse length, because the pulse length is so short right now. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. I think maybe a, a Schmidt trigger could help with that, or some other kind of circuit, but... Either way, if you want to suggest something in the comments that can fix it, that would be helpful for my next videos and stuff. But for now, thank you for watching and stay tuned for my next video.